Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the F1 2021 career mode here on the channel and the final ever episode of Formula 1 2021 career mode here on the channel. What a ride it has been and here we are coming up to the conclusion of season 5 before we head to F1 22 early next week. Hopefully first episode coming as soon as Tuesday once that Champions Edition uh, arrives here in Canada. So I'm very excited for that but I'm going to be staying out very late trying to make sure I get an episode recorded and put out as quick as I can for you guys. But uh, here we are coming into the final ever episode. And you see Lando Norris up by just under 10 points over Max Verstappen uh, going into this championship race. And that's the battle we are watching coming into this championship uh, episode here in Brazil. Is Norris and Verstappen. Sebastian Vettel mathematically not out of the championship picture. But he needs a miracle where he needs to, at the bare minimum, win the GP. Uh, and hope that Norris and Verstappen have uh, serious issues that take them out of a points running order here today. Uh, here in Brazil, unfortunately, a, a track that's been very harsh on me in this F1 2021 crib mode. I've never been able to gel with the setup and this track, and I've always struggled in qualifying. I've always struggled in the race here as we come through into qualifying. A so important uh, qualifying session here today in Brazil. By the way, at the end of the episode, we are going to go through and quickly look over all of our stats from each season uh, before we call it a career. We've driven for so many different teams. We've driven for Haas. We've driven for Aston Martin. We've driven for McLaren and now we end our career here in F1 2021 with this BWT Mercedes machine uh, and so excited for this final race and hopefully it goes nice and smooth. Now qualifying I talked about I've never been able to really gel with this track and, and with the, the setup here and this season I don't know what it's been about this Mercedes but when we miss the setup or just miss something we really really miss it here uh, so hopefully we can find something but unfortunately it wasn't happening right off the bat here I had to make three laps in Q1 we go P15 I make a third lap here and find about another tenth of a second a two tenths of a second just about but I kind of gave up about half a tenth in that final corner here and as we cross the line we go faster again still P15 but we would end up eliminated in Q1 we were out in Q1 an embarrassing here for this final episode of a qualifying effort, but there's nothing we can do about it. Let's see what the qualifying order was as we're going to head to the grid for the final race. Welcome along then to the place where heroes and history are made. It's where the 2008 title was decided in the final corner. And it's the place, a year later, that Jensen Button stormed through from 14th on the grid to claim his one and only driver's championship. It's into Lagos and it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Interlagos, always a very special race here in Brazil. It's a 2.7 mile circuit with nine lefts and six rights for a total of 15 corners. The fastest lap today should have an average speed of around 135 miles per hour. If, of course, the weather stays dry until the end of the Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson is with me one last time this year as we bid a fond farewell to another great season of Formula One. Well, the winter break is looming once again. No doubt many of those teams already have their eyes firmly on next season. But there's still work to be done here. Still championship positions to decide, which can make a big difference to the prize money. So no one's going to be taking their foot off the throttle just yet. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and will start from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, he'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Sonoda, Valtteri Bottas and Leclerc, Sainz, Ricardo, Vettel and George Russell, Stroll, Giovinazzi, Nobuharu Matsushita and Ocon. The Golden Boy, Mick Schumacher. Nicholas Latifi and Callum Islands. Joe and Christian Lungard. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. There you see the starting grid. Sebastian Vettel has some work to do all the way down in ninth place, unfortunately for him. Uh, but Lando Norris qualifies on pole exactly what he needs to be doing coming into this race with the championship lead. But it's just eight points that separate those two drivers. So Verstappen wants to win and hope that Norris finishes third or worse. That would basically be how Verstappen wins the World Drivers Championship. Norris just simply needs to finish ahead of Verstappen uh, and hope that uh, they're in the points and then they're fine and Vettel can't win either. And Norris well. So uh, a one-stop strategy for us here. We're going to go 
from the soft tire, stretch it out a little bit here, and then move on to the hard compound tire and, and bring it home, basically, from that point on. So we'll see if the championship contenders of Mr. Stamp and uh, Norris have any strategy changes here. Maybe they want to do something a little bit different here to see who comes out on top. But nonetheless, we're on the grid, ready to go green. Our final start in F1 2021 career mode is five red lights. It's going to be lights on. We are underway here in the final race of this F1 2021 career mode. Norris gets a good start, but not good enough. He's three wide in the middle. Here comes Verstappen out the inside into turn one. Gasly around the outside backs out of it. Let's those two fight it out. Norris had a bit of a lunge back at Verstappen, but it's not going to be enough. Max Verstappen second in the standings is going to come through to take the lead of this race here on this opening lap. What a start from Max Verstappen. You couldn't ask for a better start. If you're Max Verstappen right there, Lando Norris, of course, has to be already wondering what has just gone wrong here as they head through this sweeping right hander now Gasly just behind. Fortunately for Lando, he is in just a good enough spot to where if he finishes second to Max Verstappen today, he still wins the Drivers' Championship by a very slim uh, couple of points here. Uh, so he's definitely not in a bad position right now. But when you put Verstappen in the position where he can kind of control what happens, that's where you don't want to be if you're Lando Norris. And Verstappen has taken control of this race on just the opening lap here. So Norris maybe not in the ideal position here. Now, as you can see, everybody else uh, coming through this final turn. And for myself, it actually was not a very good start because I actually picked up some side pod damage on the car, which is going to affect our pace for the remainder of this race. So basically, it was a horrendous final start to my F1 2021 career mode here. As you're actually going to see me making a big lunge up the inside there of the Alpine. And now we're going to move up a spot there over Esteban Ocon. Uh, but we're going to get a look actually uh, in just a moment there. You can see me surveying the damage there on the car uh, and the little pop-up menu. But we're going to get a replay of what happened to me to get that damage on the start because it happened going into this corner uh, right here there as I go a little bit wide. Fortunately, no warning there as I backed out of it. But here's the replay of what happened. Schumacher picks up a bunch of damage. I go up the inside. He slims into the side of me and actually gives us the side pod damage there And I don't think he was expecting me to send it up the inside But it was such a, a quick brief moment that kind of happened that I just lunged up the inside trying to avoid the chaos And unfortunately we picked up that side pod damage Which is going to affect us for the rest of this race and that was a very tough pill to swallow on just the first opening lap uh, here in the Brazilian GP Championship Finale as I get my first warning of the day but I was struggling after this, after that damage there and the pace was not great and here comes Antonio Giovinazzi there in the BMW to lunge up my inside into turn 4. He's going to go and take that 13th position as we drop down to 14th place. This is not so far a good GP so far for us as we would actually start losing time to Giovinazzi. Now fortunately I was just close enough to stay within the DRS of Giovinazzi there and that was uh, allowing him to pull me along to land Strollis it up ahead here but then I actually lose my DRS the rear wing breaks or the DRS system breaks so the team's having to work on a fix and it goes offline which means now obviously we're not gonna have a chance to have DRS and you would see the results of that pretty quick here as I would start losing contact uh, with the BMW there and we were now uh, outside of that one second uh, gap that we need to be within of course to activate the DRS so we were in trouble after that and surprisingly I didn't lose as much time as I expected but Lando Norris on lap 12 is gonna come in into the pit lane before Verstappen. He's going to put on the medium compound tire, so he is committed to a two-stop strategy. What does Max Verstappen do? Norris going for the undercut here. It's all going to be crucial to see what Verstappen does here to try and, of course, uh, counteract what Norris is doing here uh, as we're going to, you can see, get actually closer to Giovinazzi and Lance Stroll. We were closing in on them, but then here comes the lap 14. Verstappen comes in. He takes the soft compound on. He puts on the hard compound tire, so Verstappen is going for a one stop strategy compared to Norris's two stop strategy. This could be really big here. Where is Norris going to cycle out though? That's the big question. There you see Norris right there. He's side by side with Christian Lungard. It's been a horrendous uh, couple of, of outlaps for Lando Norris. He's been struggling with traffic. He has not been able to navigate his way through traffic very well and that is played right into the hands of Max Verstappen who's already well ahead and Norris three wide there briefly with Lungard and Gasly who was just exiting the pit lane. So Gasly came in P3. He's going to come out in net P2 there as he's also able to overtake Lando Norris now. As you can see for Verstappen, uh, well ahead and on fresher tires, but on the slower compound. Uh, but still looking very good now for Max Verstappen. Verstappen would actually run me down very quick here. At the conclusion of lap 14, though, my DRS had finally come back online, uh, but we would come into the pit lane here for our one and only pit stop as well to do the same strategy, basically, that Mer uh, Verstappen is doing, and that's by putting on the hard compound tire and going to the end of this GP here, which has been a rough GP so far, and actually lose about 2x 
extra seconds right there, having to wait for the cars behind me uh, of the Williams and uh, the Alpine coming to their pit boxes. Easy to say, things just not going uh, great for us here today in this final ever GP in F1 2021 here. And actually, you can see, uh, we would cycle out briefly here in 14th place and Christian Lungard just behind myself but the drivers we were close to behind uh, within about that second DRS range of Master Chita and all them they're actually actually now about three seconds ahead so that shows you how much time I lost with waiting for cars and whatnot to come into their pit boxes but there you see actually at the end of lap 16 George Russell pulls to the side of the circuit he's going to be out due to a mechanical failure our first of the GP is Max Verstappen here leading the way on lap 20 and actually just in front you can see one of the Audis that's Kyle Mylott off the circuit there that could have been a bit of a, a bit of a moment there for Verstappen but fortunately, he was out of the way. But here's the replay of what happened there to Lungard. He actually just goes for a simple spin in turn one. And you can see he's right in the middle of the track. He's lucky Verstappen wasn't coming a lot quicker or sooner. Uh, and he was fortunately able to get out of the way. But uh, now on lap 23, you can see actually Charles Leclerc actually came into the pit lane. So we would move up into now 12th place. But the battle was on between Verstappen and Norris. Norris would end up getting the second place. But he had to come in again for that second and final pit stop. So it puts on a set of soft compound tires while Verstappen Verstappen does not have to return to the pit lane throughout the remainder of this race, meaning that Norris has to slice and dice his way through traffic here in these closing 11 laps there. So you can see myself making a lunge up the inside of Matsushita, moving up into P11 here in this Mercedes in these closing 10 laps about to get underway. There you see the traffic that Norris was having to deal with with Ricardo and Carlos Sainz, and he was picking these cars up. He was gaining spots. He would pass Sainz. He would get around the outside nearly of Daniel Ricardo, but would have to wait to the DRS here on the straightaway to actually be able to go and pass the Australian here and he would do so uh, down this straightaway former teammates right there and last season's champion of course of Daniel Ricciardo uh, not making it easy for Lando Norris who's trying to become a two-time Formula One world champion just like Verstappen is today the two Red Bull drivers now as you see Leclerc was on the move he passed Matsushita he was able to pass myself as well so he unfortunately dropped back down into 12th place here as you can see Norris now passing Yuki Tsunoda in the Alpha Tori so up to fourth place but Norris needs minimum P2 with the current situation of Verstappen leading to still win the World Drivers' Championship. It might be too little too late for Lando Norris here now as we were approaching the final three laps of the season and of the career mode in general here as Matsushita was within DRS range and actually was able to catch me a, a little bit off guard and uh, get up the inside, make a pass down into turn one, but I was planning to repass him right here down into turn four with the assist of DRS here now as we're going to have a very, very large run down this straightaway, but just hasn't been our GP with the damage on the side pawns. It's not certainly been the easiest GP of my career, but even if we didn't have damage, I don't think we had a great car to begin with. Things just didn't flow and gel uh, with the setup, with the track and whatnot here in this weekend, unfortunately, as we come through to start the final lap of our F1 2021 career mode in this championship finale in Brazil. Lando Norris came in with an eight-point lead over Max Verstappen, but it's not going to matter anymore because Max Verstappen is in P1, Norris down in fourth place, not enough to hang on to the championship. Max Verstappen is going to win the Brazilian GP and become a two-time World Drivers Champion here in Formula 1 and as well Red Bull will win the Constructors again as Lando Norris a disappointing day for him he's going to cross the line for a disappointing fourth place of course a great result but obviously not going to be enough for Lando here as we come through into the final couple of corners here what a career it has been we have finished in the points every single race this season but unfortunately we're not going to finish in the points here in the last GP of our F1 career career now. It's going to be P12. We hope at least Master Shita has DRS. He's got to run, but it's not going to be enough. We cross the line for P12 here in the Brazilian GP. What a career it has been. Max Verstappen is going to wrap up this career mode as a two-time Formula 1 World Drivers Champion. As Sebastian Vettel wins Driver of the Day. Let's head to the podium for the celebrations. And with that, another year of Formula 1 draws to a close. And the new World Drivers Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. They've done it then. Victory in the last race of the season and the championship as well. What a phenomenal end to a terrific Formula One season. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. 
Max Verstappen becomes the first multi-time champion, a part of our career mode. You think back to season one, where Valtteri Bontas won. We had season two was uh, Max Verstappen. We had Lando Norris, uh, of course, win a championship there in season three. Daniel Ricciardo in season four, and then Verstappen again here in the fifth and final season. We were wondering when we are going to see a multi-time champion, and, and what I'm so excited for in F122 is I'm actually going to start keeping track of driver wins and podiums and whatnot and polls, etc., uh, in champion chips and whatnot so we're gonna have an all-time list that keeps updated as well as we're gonna have our own uh specific f122 driver roster uh list with their wins throughout the actual career mode itself uh not just the all-time wins that we already have uh from real life carrying over into the game we'll be keeping track of constructors uh statistics as well in f122 my team and there's so many things that i'm bringing into this f122 my team career mode uh that i am just thoroughly excited for you guys to see uh and you're gonna hopefully see that as soon as next Tuesday. Now, I'm not going to be doing, I know some content creators have done a part zero and whatnot and showing like they're my team team. We're not going to be doing that. You guys are going to see it all in that first episode uh, of what's going on, but I can confirm right now early on that we're going to be uh, probably called track house racing for the my team career mode, but there you see uh, the final standings there. Unfortunately, Zhou Guan Yu and his Audi teammate Kalamila did not get any points this season, but the only two drivers and only team did not score points on the season. There you see the overall finishing positions uh, here here in this final season as you'll see me uh, scrolling through you might want to pause the screen uh, when we're scrolling through if you want to see the overall uh, stuff from each and every single season with the finishing results and whatnot but two wins this season last season of course we had a breakout season there winning so many uh, races and just having an overall consistent season but unfortunately it was the retirements that took us out of the championship at the end uh, but still a runner-up finish in Abu Dhabi last season and in the championship as well got us P2 there so season three we picked up our first win of that season in France and then we picked up our first F1 victory in general in Mexico in Season 2 after a crazy, crazy event uh, there in that second season with the Aston Martin. Season 1 with Haas, of course, never expected much there just to prove our name and we did so to get ourselves opportunities to where we ended up at this point here in this F1 2021 career mode. I hope you guys enjoyed the run. It's been crazy. It's hard to believe that's the final episode um, and I am so excited for this F1 22 game win, which I think is going to be a huge new direction for this channel that I'm so excited for. If you guys enjoyed, you know what what to do. Let me know what you would love to see in this F1 2022 uh, My Team Career Mode, but that is going to do it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the continued support. I hope you enjoyed, and that is going to do it. For myself, the F1 2021 Career Mode has come to an end. I'll see you guys for F1 22. Thank you for watching, and have yourselves a great day, everybody.